Hey Canucks fans and welcome to Clay's Canucks Commentary for Tuesday, October the 31st. Yes, it's Halloween today, but there's nothing scary about last night's game. In fact, it was a thrilling game, a 2-1 overtime loss to the visiting Dallas Stars and it ended the Vancouver Canucks four game winning streak. The game was quite exciting, especially as it got on closer to the third into overtime. The first two periods were not bad, but the third period and the overtime period were very exciting with some great chances, end-to-end -end action, good saves, some scrambling play around the net, all in all made for a very entertaining game. So of course I want the Canucks to win, but I'm mature enough to realize they're not going to win every game. So on the games they lose, I want to be entertained, and I certainly was entertained last night. A few things that stood out to me. Jason Magna, he drew in for Brock Besser. He only got four minutes of ice time. So that made Jake Vertanen's nine minutes of ice time in comparison look ginormous. Also, Burmistrov had under 10 minutes, so those were the three forwards that didn't play a lot in the third period as the Canucks looked to not only tie the game up, but then to break the tie in the last 14 minutes or so. On the other side of the spectrum, you had Marcus Granlund with over 23 minutes, and Sutter and Horvat with over 20 minutes, and Derek Dorsett right behind with 19 minutes. And on the blue line, you had three blue liners with over 20 minutes. Del Zotto, of course, he's been our minute leader. Ben Hutton had a big game with 24 minutes. And then um, Chris Tanev also had over 20 minutes, with Eric DeBranson right behind with 19 minutes and change. Jacob Markstrom had a great game. He made, uh, obviously made almost every save except for the two, the power play goal that beat him, and then the overtime winner. But he, was, he played well, he played aggressively as we've come, uh, we've come to know. And uh, one play in particular, you guys know the one I'm talking about, it actually led to the Canucks only goal. Uh, Shorthanded, Dallas came streaking in, a puck, a loose puck. Markstrom skated out to the, to the sideboards to try and beat Dallas forward. They basically got there at the same time, but Markstrom got enough of the puck and the forward where the puck did not go towards the, to the Canucks net. Markstrom slammed into the sideboards. Meanwhile, the puck got turned up and it went from Henrik to Daniel to Vanek and then to Gagne, who put in the rebound on the power play for his first goal of the season. And needless to say, I'm sure he was very relieved to get that goal. So Markstrom was good. Can't really fault him on the two goals. One was the power play goal uh, from Sagan. It was, it, Markstrom claims that Sagan whiffed on the shot, but regardless, it went in, went bar down. It looked pretty impressive live, actually. And I, the one thing I, I would say about the Canucks, actually two things. One of them is um, they missed a lot of glorious chances right, uh, right on the doorstep. You had guys like uh, Gagne had a chance, Dorset had a chance, and these chances were caused by some great forechecking by the Canucks. They're doing a really good job of, of getting pucks and creating turnovers deep in the offensive zone, which has been awesome. And Bo Horvat had a couple good chances. One shorthanded, a breakaway that he got stuffed, and then right 50 minutes into overtime on a two-on-one, he had a chance and he put it right off the post, so a couple more inches to the right, and he would have had the game winner in, in overtime, which would, have been, which would have been wonderful, obviously. And then uh, the other thing I would want to say is, is the one thing that the Canucks could have done is you wish that the power play clicked a little sooner. They, um, they didn't score in their first three chances in the, in the first period. And that was a chance to at least get a goal, at least put Dallas on their heels. And you knew that it would be tough. I, as I mentioned yesterday's video, video, Dallas has the second best penalty kill in the league. And they had the first, the strongest power play in the league. And that's what scared me, is if we weren't connecting on our power play chances, you knew it was only a matter of time where Dallas would connect on theirs. So you're kind of playing with fire that way. And to the Canucks' credit, they actually killed off um, all the D Dallas power plays except for that one that Sagan scored on. The coverage wasn't so great on that Sagan goal. You can't really leave him wide open. He's the one guy you don't want to leave wide open, and he certainly made the Canucks pay. Otherwise, the shutdown line of Dorsett, Granlin, and Sutter played that line of Radulov, Sagan, and Ben straight up and played them very well and limited their chances and their dangerousness. Their danger Is that a word? Their, their, how dangerous they were during um, five on five play. So all in all, it was a very exciting game. It was a very fun game. I went with a priest friend of mine, Father Gary. He's only been a few games over the past few years and he was remarking at how fast the Canucks look, how aggressive they look. And I would tend to agree. And as I've said a couple times before already, I've already been more entertained in all the home games I've been to this year, just the five of them that I've been to. I only, I only missed the Calgary game. Um, I've been more entertained this year than I was in all of last season combined. So yeah, my record at the games is indeed two, one and two, two wins one regulation loss and two overtime slash shootout losses. The only game I've missed so far has been the Calgary game and that was a regulation loss as we know too. Now the Canucks look to prepare again to play to host Corey Schneider and the New Jersey Devils who've gotten off to a wonderful start this season. A very surprising start, probably the most surprising team in the East and they are here Wednesday night. I will not be at the game, I will be at a big dinner. So um, I've, given my, I've sold my tickets for that one so I hope that Luigi and, and his friend have fun. 
Uh, but for the game, it look, it's always nice to see Schneider come in. There's always the comparisons, Bo Horvat and Corey Schneider. It, of course, that big trade back on the eve of the 2013 draft. And it's always nice to see them play against each other. would be nicer if Horvat actually scored against Schneider, but we'll see what happens tomorrow night. Okay, guys uh, and girls, let me know what you thought of the, of the game last night. Did, were you there live? Did you watch it on TV? Were you as entertained as I was? Did it look as fun on TV? Or was it as fun for you in the arena as it was for me? A loss, but a very entertaining game. Leave your comments below, and I hope you guys have a great day. I'll check in tomorrow. It's game day tomorrow as the Canucks host the Devils. God bless, and go Canucks go.